Hey there YouTube, USMC Schroeder here. Got a video for you guys today. Um, taking a look at how to check an AR-15 rifle for serviceability. Uh, I'm going to check everything to make sure that the rifle will function. This is a good check for you guys at gun shows and uh, gun stops checking on a rifle that you may not know about. So this is how uh, this is how I check rifles. So stay with me while I break this thing down and we'll go check it out. Okay, we got the rifle broken apart here, and we're going to go ahead and uh, start with the upper, work our way down towards the bolt group, and then the lower. So, uh, first thing we're going to want to check, um, obviously, before you start messing with any weapon, it's going to be a safety check. This weapon obviously cannot fire, so I'm going to skip that step. Next step is going to be to check the, uh, the barrel. So, we're checking for serviceability. I'm going to go ahead and grab a hold of the 6 inch barrel portion here and the lower receiver and I'm going to twist I'm going to make sure it's a solid piece which this is so that's good. Okay. Next I'm going to go ahead and check the front sight post for alignment. Now the way I like to do this is I like to look straight on at the barrel and what I'll do is I'll run a line all the way down and make sure that that's straight. You're going to make sure it's lined up straight. This That works for AKs too, um, but that's a different topic. I'm going to make sure it's lined up straight. You're going to make sure that the ears on the front sight post, if it has one, aren't bent in, and you're going to make sure that it's adjustable. So we'll go ahead and take the tip of a bullet, and there's a little detent at the front of any A2 style front sight post. Go ahead and, and rotate just like that. If I had a smaller bullet, this would be a lot easier, but... There we go. So, that's what you're checking for. You're going to check to make sure the front side post is in good condition. Straight, adjustable, and that the it's not caved in on the sides here. Because these ears, whether or not you really know it, on a rifle, are very important because as you're looking through the peep sight, they help your eye naturally align the whole setup. So the next thing we're going to check is the gas tube. Now, for those of you who don't know, the gas tube is only secured to the weapon by a pin in the front sight base. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the front sight post, or excuse me, we're going to take the gas tube, and like I said, it's only secured here, so it'll wiggle, that's normal. But I'm going to try to pull it back and forth. Yep, that's secured well. Okay, so obviously we know that this connection is good. We're going to go all the way back in now. We're going to look inside the upper receiver. Go ahead and look. It's a uniform shape. It's not bent. It's not uh, oval. It's a nice round shape. That means that it'll have good, uh, a good contact with the gas key, so it'll help it function correctly. Okay. Uh, next, we're going to check the handguards. You're going to look for cracks right around here, and on the other end, right around here, because if any of these tabs that secure the, the handguards break off. You could be out in the middle of doing whatever you're doing, and your handguard falls off. And now you're, you know, up shit creek without a paddle. So, I don't want to touch a hot barrel, and I don't think you do too. So there's a good check. Now we're moving on to the, the bolt carrier group. Okay, first thing you want to check with the bolt carrier group is you're going to look for irregular patterns of wear on the guide rails. You should see it a little bit in the back, and a little bit on the front, that's normal. But if you see, like sloping angles, or if you see crazy wear on the rear portion, that there should be almost zero wear on any part of the bolt carrier body other than the rails. Okay, you're going to look for cracks, you're going to look for pitting, okay, you're going to check the, uh, the staking on the gas key, wiggle the gas key, if the gas key wiggles, the whole bolt carrier is going to need to be sent to a gunsmith and restaked. Um, you could try 
and restake it yourself, but do you really want to mess it up? Do you want the gas key breaking off inside the rifle while you fire and then you've got a locked up AR-15? No. Take it to a gunsmith and do it unless you are like overwhelmingly confident that you can do it. Next you're going to check and make sure that you have smooth and fluid motion of the bolt inside the body. It shouldn't be hard. You should be able to push it in and out. Now some bolts from the uh, less expensive manufacturers like Delton, um, those bolts are a little sticky to begin with, but give them about a hundred rounds before you really expect them to be very fluid. Okay, we can go ahead and break this down. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to check and you're going to want to stagger your these rings. You're going to want to stagger them. See, I got two that are lined up, so I'm going to move those away from each other. That's much better. See? These openings in the ends of the rings, you want to make sure that they're not touching, they're not overlapping because these work the same way the rings in a piston engine work like uh, you know, every single car on the face of the earth almost. When the gases build up, this is what stops the gases from escaping. It's a very simple system and it works really well. But if the rings aren't lined up correctly, if they're not staggered like that, you could lose gas pressure, which could hurt your cycling, which could mean, you know, it, it might eject, but it won't pick a roundup out because it didn't, didn't go back far enough with the bolt because there wasn't enough gas pressure, um, silly things like that, so that you're just going to want to check that. Next is the lower receiver, and uh, this one's going to be real simple. All we're going to do with this is we're going to go ahead and check the, uh, the stock, make sure that it's connected well to the lower receiver. You got no crazy wiggle, okay? You're going to make sure that the, you're going to make sure that your buffer assembly cycles freely. Okay. You're going to make sure that you cannot fire the weapon when it's on safe. And here's a little bonus tip. Okay, this isn't normal, but go ahead and, and focus on the hammer here. And watch. Now, the weapon's in safe, but that's not dictating what's going on here. What you're going to look for is you're going to look for the hammer moving downwards. The further back I pull the trigger, the hammer moves downwards to a point, and when it's on fire, the hammer will come up. Okay? I'm trying not to beat the snot out of my lower receiver here. I'm still trying to show you guys. Okay? What that is, is that's a properly adjusted trigger. All triggers should move, well, not I can't say all. But as far as AR-15s and even AKs go, you're going to want to see that downward movement first. That means that the trigger is going to be safe. It's a, a negative angle on the trigger face, and you want that. Now, um, the last thing that you're going to check is obviously you're going to put the weapon into fire. And if you're at a gun shop, don't pull the trigger and let it slam into the lower. I slowed it down a little on that first one, but I feel like a dick for doing it anyway because if this beats up the receiver, that's just bad. It may or may not hurt the rifle, but you know what? It just it sucks because some of these don't have that cutout right there that you might be able to see. And they're they're gonna hit it and they're gonna dent the lower receiver. And that just sucks. So don't just drop the hammer willy-nilly. Brace it with your thumb when you're pulling it and stop it, okay? But you're going to want to do this test. You're going to go ahead. You're going to check for that downward movement, indicating a nice safe trigger. You're going to flip it over into fire with your thumb on top of the hammer. You're going to pull. Bam, okay? That's nice. Now what you're going to do is keep the trigger pulled. If you let go of the trigger and it's all the way up, the hammer's all the way up here, that's fine. Pull the trigger. Pull this all the way back. You got one click. There you go. Now, focus on the hammer and listen for this clunk. Okay, that's the reset.
that's also very good. That's going to help ensure the functionality of the weapon. If you go and you, you pull the trigger, right, and you're up here with it, and you go ahead and you, and you push it back down, and then you let go of the trigger and nothing happens, that means that your sear is kind of messed up. The whole trigger assembly is going to need to be looked at, again, by a gunsmith, because this downward movement that that happens with this trigger isn't easy to do. And it's the difference between a couple of file strokes between being good and wrong. That's not something I want to mess up. I'm going to send that to a gunsmith just because the trigger, to me personally, is one of the most important parts of the whole rifle. So I'm not going to want to mess it up. So those are a couple of things that you can look at insofar as uh, checking an AR-15 before you buy it. Uh, real quick, just to wrap it up, we covered checking the barrel for tightness, checking the front sight base, front sight post. Okay. We covered checking the gas tube, all right, you know, and there's all the little bells and whistles you can check, like the magazine release, obviously, the forward assist, make sure the sights adjust correctly, make sure that all the attachments, hand guards, pistol grips, stock, all fit nice and secure. AR-15s aren't really meant to be loose. The only part of the whole rifle that may be loose is the upper and lower receiver fit. Even if there's only a couple thousandths off, you'll still get a little bit of wiggle, you know, and that's normal. That's, you're, you're talking the difference between like two thousandths of an inch will make it wiggle a little or not. Now, I'm not saying it should be excessive. If you go to pry the weapon open, like if you push the two receivers open and you'll be able to open up a little bit of a gap on one side, like they'll fit like this, okay? And you can do this, obviously. That's what I'm trying to say. If you can take a pen tip and put it in there, that's wrong and bad. Don't don't touch that rifle because it's mismatched. But if you can like open it up enough to fit like a piece of paper in there, that's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. Um, you can buy an accurizing wedge that fits in the back, and that'll take off all of that tension. So uh, I hope this uh, helps you guys when you're out shopping, or you know, just when you're going through the gun safe, and you, you know, you're doing your monthly cleaning, which you should be cleaning your rifles. But uh, yeah, you know, I, I hope that you guys uh, really get something out of this. And uh, the last thing I wanted to cover with you guys, as far as cleaning your rifles, I use CLP. Um, Break Freeze, great. Otis makes good stuff. This is what's issued. You know, it's all good stuff. Okay, I also like Hops number nine. You know, really? It's kind of like changing your oil. You know, people argue about Penn's oil and mobile one, but I'm thinking as long as you're doing it, you're really kind of two steps ahead of the game on that one. AKs, I, to be honest, I bore snake my AK and that's it. But this rifle, no, I've got a whole box of cleaning gear for this rifle because I know it needs it. AR-15s don't like to be dirty. They don't. So clean your AR-15s. You know, uh, a lot of people, they don't understand, you know, they they buy an AR-15 and it works really well for a couple of months and and then you know they're, they're they get out of that first bot rifle experience excitement and and they just they get so pissed off because they go they buy some wolf ammo and then it jams up and then oh yeah it's steel cased ammo it just sucks if you haven't ever seen one of these before <laughs> get one <laughs> alright I'm not like I'm not defending steel case ammo but I am saying that I know probably half of all those weapon malfunctions could have been stopped if the per person had just gotten a hold of a chamber brush, which is what this is, run it into the chamber and cleaned out the chamber, then wiped it out with a Q-tip and put some of this in there. Clean your rifles, especially AR-15s. It's not that hard and you'll save yourself a huge headache. Um, but you know, I really hope this has given you all some insight. Uh, I got a couple more videos coming out here. I'm going to be talking about a lot of great things about the rifle. I'm going to be talking about uh, shooting positions with AR-15s. Um, you know, I don't have a lot of knowledge that's different from anybody else. But what I do have is I'm pretty good with the M16. So I've got this, and I'm going to try to pass on what knowledge I can to the YouTube community as far as Marine Corps marksmanship. So. Look forward to those videos. Uh, as soon as I get some more ammo, I'm going to head back out and uh, really going to lay the hurt down on this thing. 
and uh, plan on passing all that knowledge out to you guys. So, thank you uh, for tuning in. Um, thanks for watching the videos, and uh, God bless America. Have a good day.